recording. Uh, January 12th, Tuesday, Habit, Skills, and Attitude. And we're going to stick in the pocket of Zoom and Zoom selling and how to bring prospects to a Zoom call. We did a great piece yesterday uh, with Rachel Hutchison speaking that this last year, her and Rob literally sold almost everything via uh, computer, uh, Zoom from their the comforts of their own home. So guys, I want to make sure that we understand that this goes beyond just selling in a pandemic and just trying to come up, come up with other options, that this is very much a viable, um, another option that you can use without a pandemic. She mentioned yesterday, Rachel, that she sold in four different states in one day. And when you close up a presentation, um, whoever you're speaking with, family, friends, whoever it may be, a construction business, the next state over, the ability to say, hey, are you familiar with Zoom? And they go, yeah, cool. Hop on there. Um, you cut out a lot of travel time, a lot of um, – it's just very short and sweet if you do it correctly. So – um, Brian, he, he's been traveling, training a ton. So he's somebody that I'd like to have speak as well, just being the amount of phone dialing that he has done. Now, traditionally, yes, we do want to see people face to face. Even Rachel said, you know, I love seeing people face to face. Uh, this is very much that type of business, but sometimes you're not going to find yourself in that position. So, um, Brian, either one, I can call you, you can call me. Okay. Um, well, you can call me, Zach, and role play that, but I want to just uh, take a couple minutes to um, share with everyone how to successfully set yourself up, um, kind of what that looks like. So, sure. guys, I'm, you know, just imagine that you're at the very, um, that you just sold a, a family. You know, you just protected that family that you're sitting in front of or, you know, whatever. It could be virtually. Um, you, you, you know, you protected that family over Zoom. <clears throat> and... You get them covered, um, and at the very end, this is kind of where you pick up when after you get referrals. So I'm going to talk about um, like how to get the prospect to make your job easier by having that prospect reach out to your um, your referrals for you. Okay, so again, we're starting um, we're starting at the point where you just got the last referral, um, and I always like to congratulate that prospect for taking out the coverage and making that choice, right? That, that kind of ties into our sales cycle, how we want to solidify the sale. So imagine you just wrapped up, you just got, you know, 10 or 15 referrals from that prospect. You got the account number, everything went well. So you congratulate them. So congratulations, Zach, on, uh, on you know, taking out the new coverage. What is the biggest reason that you decided to take this out? Uh, you know, I, I always like, I mean, you, you can role play with me if you want, Zach. Sure. Um, well, you got half my family signed up and um, the, just the peace of mind of it all. Just the peace of mind. That's yeah. awesome. Um, well, congratulations again. And I, guys, I always like to congratulate our prospects on, on taking out the coverage. You know, number one, you're solidifying the sale. Number two, it's making them feel good. And it's giving them confidence when, you know, after you just got a bunch of referrals, from them and um, you're transitioning from you know getting them covered to uh, you know now you got a bunch of referrals in front of you and you want that prospect to reach out to those um, referrals for you so they're friends and family and at least let them know that you will be calling so however you want to say that um, but I always ask them for a favor I just say hey can, can you help me out with something um, and most of the time they say yeah of course um, can you at least let these people know that I will be calling? And I always like to throw this little one-liner in there, guys, just to, again, solidify it, make that prospect feel comfortable, and really just take the pressure off the sale um, of me being a salesperson, just another salesperson um, that's reaching out to their friends and family. Um, and I always ask them, I'm like, can you, can you at least do me a favor and let them know that Brian from Globe Life Family Heritage will be calling them. Um, and guys, if you can do it right then and there and just say, hey, do you mind just picking up your phone right now and just sending them a quick text that I will be calling? Because let's be honest, guys, it's just one of those things that 
um, human nature again, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, right? So you want to ask that prospect to at least reach out via, you know, text or phone call right then and there, if you can, um, to at least, you know, get, get it done. Because again, you're going to notice this, that 50% of the time they're going to, you know, almost a hundred percent of the time that prospect will say that they're going to do that. Um, but only about 50% of the time they actually do. Okay. So try to just take the lead um, and take control of that situation and have them reach out as soon as possible. Um, Cause it's going to make your job a lot easier guys when you make a phone call and they are already expecting you and better yet if they have your personal contact number. So um, the thing I like to always say to them is, uh, or let that prospect know, is that, um, hey, Zach, please um, help me out and at least give these people, um, you know, let them know that I will be calling. And remember what I told you originally, I can't promise that I'm able, to, uh, that I'm necessarily going to be able to help them out. Like, I don't know if they're going to be interested or not, but I'm just looking to at least introduce myself to them. And again, just kind of take the pressure off. So, uh, Zach, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, Guys, I just think it's important to know how to set that up um, by taking the pressure off and at least making your job easier by letting that prospect know that you're going to be calling their prospects and having them at least provide the contact number and let them know. So, Zach, if you want to be, um, if you want to change roles, (coughs) sure. Reach out to me. Ring, so ring, goes, ring, um, ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Hello. Hey, is this Brian? This is Brian. Hey, this is Zach Tober. I know my name is probably not familiar to you, uh, but Kyle Schneider. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, I know Kyle. Yeah. Uh, did he be mentioned? I'd be reaching out to you. You know what? I think I think he did. Uh, this was like last week sometime. He did mention that someone was going to be calling me. Awesome, awesome. And if he did, I understand he's, he's crazy busy. Um, listen, uh, Kyle's a client of mine. He didn't say that this would be a fit for you. He just mentioned I should introduce myself to you. Um, did I catch you at a really bad time? Uh, no, I mean, this, 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 is, a, this is okay. I got a couple minutes. Okay, cool. Um, can I take 30 seconds and tell you what I do for Kyle? And you can let me know whether or not you want to hang up on me or continue talking. Sound fair? Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty fair. Cool. Uh, Brian, I talk to families like Kyle uh, about unexpected things like cancer, heart disease, stroke, anything intensive care related and or accidents. Kyle has great health insurance. However, he knows that health insurance pays doctors and hospitals. I sold Kyle a policy that helps costs not covered by health insurance, like lost income, deductibles, co-pays, travel. He likes that it pays on top of any other insurance he already has, and it covers him and Sarah. And But what he really likes is that if he doesn't end up using the policy, he actually gets 100% of his money back. It's called return a premium. Oh, wow. And again, Kyle didn't say that this would be a fit for you. He just mentioned I should share it with you. You probably have some questions like, hey, what's the coverage? What's the cost? how the money back works. And I'm going to have some questions for you as well. Um, So would you be open to meeting with me? uh, So you could ask me some questions and I could also ask you you some questions. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of on on lockdown right now, quarantine. So I can't really meet you face to face. Oh, perfect. Are you familiar with Zoom? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with Zoom. Awesome. Awesome. Um, would you be able to hop on there this evening, maybe uh, 5 or maybe 7.30? Yeah, that, that should work. Which one would you prefer? Uh, let's do 7.30. 7.30. Now, is this your cell phone number? It is. Awesome. And, and real quick, can you uh, throw me your email? Yes, that's uh, first name, last name, at protectonefamily.com. Awesome. Very cool. So, Brian, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to send you an email with some instructions on how to hop on here. And then I'm also going to call you at 715 just to remind you. And then, like I said, just um, hop on there with me with any questions you may have. And we will keep it short and sweet. Okay. Well, sounds great, Zach. Brian, Thank it was a pleasure chatting with you. Absolutely, man. Talk soon. All right. Later. So. Well done, Zach. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, um, guys, once you have that written down and you say the same thing over and over no fat on it just trim it all just 
you want it of substance and then bring them to the table and just like approaching you're going to have some people back out just like when setting appointments you're going to have people back out so what rachel mentioned yesterday is double down on the amount of contacts and guess what it's very easy to do because guess what you're not driving you're not using time driving you're not paying for gas you're literally just dialing another number so it's very very crucial that at the end of doing a demonstration that you gather more and more referrals okay just simply asking hey who can you give the pleasure of telling me no to you know now however you say that that's up to you I will re mention this upon finishing a demonstration with somebody who bought or did not buy okay we're still gonna say hey that was simple right you know we're all done pretty painless let me ask you a couple questions first of all are you upset at all that Kyle passed my name on to you no no not at all right are you comfortable with the way that I approach you on the phone? Yeah, you were very nice. Awesome, I appreciate that. So maybe I can ask for your help. Everyone has been so thankful to know about this. Even people that haven't been able to pick up a policy have still been really thankful that I reached out. Who are some families or individuals that you care about that I could just say hi to? And based on who you are, would listen to me? Um. My, my brother. Brother? Cool. What's his name? His name is Jacob. Jacob. You just call him Jake. Jake. All right. Be sure to do that. Awesome. Uh, who else? Uh, my other brother. His name is Alec. Alec. Awesome. Jake. Alec. Uh, my little sister, Liliana. Liliana. I like that. Cool. So, guys... He's already given me three names. Keep going. Who else? Who else? Who else? And then after you gather those names, hey, real quick, what's John's, uh, sorry, uh, you said Jake's number? Yeah, Jake, not Jake. Yes. Yeah, what's Jake's number? And then Alec, and then Lily, and then you layer, just like pre-approach, layer it. That way you can grab as many names as possible, and then just go back and gather their personal information being, hey, cell phone number, and is it best to catch them before or after five? Probably after five. After five? Cool. And, and Brian, can you just do me one last favor? Can you just let yeah, them sure. know that I'm going to be reaching out? It's Zach Tolbert from Globe Life Family Heritage. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And just so you know that when I do reach out to them, uh, I just let them know, hey, you know, feel free to hang up on me. Or if this, you know, trips your trigger, we'll, we'll, we'll keep chatting. So there's no pressure. So again, Brian, thank you so much for your, your, your trust in business. And if you ever have a question, please reach out. And guys, I recommend at the end, send them your contact. All right, there, there's nothing worse than an insurance person you can't get a hold of. They're out there. So send them your contact. Have your own personal contact made up with your cell phone number, your office address, your email, um, maybe even your Facebook pages on there. You know, Brian, my insurance man, Glazinski, whatever it might be, make sure that they're able to get in touch with you because now they've gained not just an insurance agent, but they actually feel like they've gained a friend and you're very accessible and that builds even more trust. It's just like Kyle with all his photos and Rachel, they take pictures with everybody. It's easy to go, hey, do you know so-and-so? But if you show somebody that you know, somebody who's a client of yours, it builds it doubles down on the amount of the trust and importance of what we do. So, Brian, that's pretty much all I got. I want to encourage yeah. that everybody role play this. And the sooner you can get a Zoom account, and guys, I'm serious, feel free to reach out to me, um, anybody else, because instead of having to drive three, four hours to go work with somebody, you can literally hop on somebody's Zoom call and run through the the demonstration find out what questions you may be lacking all right you might be missing one or two questions that really push them over the top and help them decide to get it today instead of putting you off until february so any any takeaways any questions that was great guys that was really good 
Awesome. Guys, I know we did this uh, just a couple weeks ago, but again, we, we've got to get this into our vocabulary just as the the first approach, second approach, um, close and rebuttals. You've got to know what to say, when to say it. And I promise you, if you learn it, you're going to have so much more confidence. When you're looking at that list of names and numbers, you're not going to panic. You're not going to isolate yourself because of fear. You're going to say, hey, I might not get it right the first time, but I'm going to go ahead and start dialing. And next thing you know, you got people coming to the table and you're working a fraction of what you're out, you know, what you're doing in the field, eight to nine hours. You can now really crunch a lot of time and get a lot more done. Sweet. It's great, Zach. <clears throat> Good stuff, man. I can tell that you've uh, you spent a lot of time, you know, shadowing and trying to memorize that script. So, uh, I, I got forced into it back in March. We all did uh, Zoom, yep, and me too. guys just accept things as they are sometimes and make those adjustments. It, it can be overwhelming, but you got to start. You're not going to be good the first time. I wasn't. I wasn't good the first few times I still don't think I'm that great but you've got to start somewhere and I'm telling you it does work so guys if you have any questions I say guys and girls but reach out and then um, best of luck today it's raining here in Wilmington so be safe out on the roads and um, yeah be smart all right guys have a happy uh, Tuesday bye-bye bye y'all bye Good job, guys. Thank you. Absolutely.